Hey guys, welcome to Chapter 5, Topic 2. In this topic, we're going to talk all about virus structure. Basically, what are the components of the viruses and how are they organized? This topic is important because we use virus structure as a type of virus classification. So in order to understand virus nomenclature, we have to be able to understand what parts make up the virus structure. So before we get started too far, or before we go too far down the road of virus structure, let's remind ourselves about viral size range. Viruses are the smallest infectious agents, unless you want to talk about prions, but we're not going to talk about prions today, right now, that's later. Um, as you can see in this picture here, the big green cell is a yeast cell, and then you can see that there are three examples of prokaryotic cells right above them. And notice how that they're the big, or how much smaller prokaryotes than are than eukaryotes, just like we've always talked about in class. But now, let's take a moment and look at all the different viruses you can see on this picture that indicate how much smaller viruses can be, and look at how small they can get down to. Yellow fever virus is 22 nanometers across, so it's really, really small. Also take a moment and check out the different shapes that they come in, because we're going to talk about those as well here in a little bit. So all viruses have at least two things in them. They all have a core that contains genetic information. This can either be DNA or RNA. They also always have a capsid, which is a protective protein coat. This protein coat comes in a variety of shapes, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second. So that's what everybody has. Some viruses then have envelopes, and then some viruses also have spikes that come out of them. And we most often see pictures of these he of these nice spherical uh, viruses with these spikes coming out, but that's just one representative of viruses. They come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. So here's our types of capsids. Remember, capsid is a protein coat that prote protects the genetic information. There are two types of capsids we need to focus on, helical capsids and icosahedral capsids. You can also see that on this image here that there's um, complex capsids, but we don't need to worry about that one right now. We're going to talk about bacteriophages in the next topic lecture. So let's focus on helical capsid capsids and icosahedral capsids. Helical capsids are almost like a sheath that protects the DNA and it kind of makes this tube-like structure. And you can see that here in the top image on the left-hand side. This is the naked version. When it's enveloped, you can see it inside, almost within that core of that um, virus on the enveloped structure. And you can see that in the second image below. Icosahedral is a little bit more structured, it's got 20 sides to it, and so it's very geometrical, and you can see that in the bottom image here. That bottom image is a naked virus. That icosahedral structure can also exist within an envelope. So make sure you understand these four different types and what's different about each of them. But remember, all of these are capsids that protect the virus. So here is viral envelopes. Now, not all viruses have envelopes, but where does this envelope come from? It comes from the cell membranes of the host cell. So either the nuclear membrane, the endoplasmic reticulum, or the cell, cell membrane. And so um, you'd think that their membranes must look a lot like ours then, but that's not the case. In fact, when they do this, um, they transform these membranes to be their own membranes. They move, they switch out proteins, they change a lot of things around. So that it doesn't look anything like what it used to look like. Now one important thing to remember about these membranes and these envelopes is that they're made of phospholipids and we know that they're really pliable um, pliable membranes, which means that the virus shape is not the spherical shape that you always see here. They can have a variety of shapes because it's so mobile. So just remember that viruses are not always perfectly round, even though that's the example that we see 90% of the time. So as I mentioned earlier, viral nucleic acids come in two types, DNA and RNA. There's always double-stranded DNA and single-stranded DNA, and there's always single-stranded RNA and double-stranded RNA. And I know that that's weird to think about double-stranded RNA because we don't, don't think about that ourselves and ourselves, but it is. But they do have that. So make sure you understand these different groups here on this slide. I don't expect you to remember the examples, but I do want you to know what the different groups are and how they're different from each other. One important thing you note here is on the single-stranded, you can see that there's two types of polarities. There's the positive polarity and the, and the negative polarity. Positive polarity means that when entering the host cell, that RNA can be read directly and made into proteins, whereas negative polarity has to have its um, complement of that sequence made before it can be made into proteins. 
Now these viral genomes can vary widely in size. Viruses are expert packers. They only bring absolutely what they need to have. So like for instance, hepatitis B only has four genes because it's a very simple virus. Whereas the herpes virus is a lot more complicated and so it has hundreds of genes. So it just depends on the virus and how much genetic information they need to bring with them. But they don't bring anything more than what they absolutely need. And the last thing, we didn't really mention this earlier in the slide for virus components because it's kind of rare, but some viruses bring enzymes with them to help get their DNA or the RNA read within the host cell. And you can see some examples here. One of the most common examples is the reverse transcriptase that's needed by retroviruses. These viruses actually bring this enzyme with them to the cells and that helps them get their DNA read. But not all viruses do this. So it's important to be aware that it's, it's just an occasional thing that some of these have. But beyond everything else, viruses only bring what they absolutely have to have to replicate. So you wouldn't see a cell that, or a virus that doesn't need reverse transcriptase carrying reverse transcriptase. It just the bare basics. So this is the end of this topic lecture. So let's remember, let's review what we have. All viruses have nucleic acids, either DNA or RNA, and either double-stranded or single-stranded. They all have capsids, which is a protein coat, and there's two main structures, icosahedral and helical. And then they, some of them have envelopes, which they derive from the host membranes, and some of them will have spikes that help them enter the host cell. And then lastly, some of them will also carry enzymes with them. So once again, please review the objectives and let me know if you have any questions.